All right, testing, testing, one, two, three. We have no desktop audio, and mic audio seems to be working. Let's go ahead with a earnest market report here on the, the bank token. So let's see. So I have uh, the bank to wrap ETH pair here on Uniswap. And I have it on the seven day chart. Um, it's just a little smoother. The seven day chart starts from the first day of the year. And, you know, it just kind of smooths it out a little bit. Um, basically, um, this is what's called an uptrend. On the weekly, right, we're. Uh, Let's see, you know, we could say this is somewhere down here, you're low, and we're looking for a, a higher, all-time new high would be great, but, you know, essentially we're looking overall for lower high. If you kind of just ignore the beginning and start from the low, um, you know, you just see an uptrend, we're looking to confirm a high. So how... How low do we have to go? All right, so you can see here from the beginning on the three day chart, we're starting to get confirmed um, highs. Uh, if we go down to the two day, uh, it looks more reasonable. Um, but this is essentially what we're looking at. We have what we hope is a bottom and we have a higher high, a higher low, a higher high. These we hope are confirmed as another higher low. And you can see our, our support trend lines are going parabolic, right? Um, these are, I think folks call, you know, we're going parabolic. The more that curves up that way, but regardless, we are in an uptrend, and the trend is your friend. Let me just remove that. And so the next thing I wanted to look at here is, so we're looking to confirm, you know, that, that we could say is a higher high, but we could get above it and it would invalidate this as a higher high. If we go to the 12 hour, we see that we do have a confirmation of a higher high. We're looking for confirmation of a lower low. You see we came down here to, let's see. I'm gonna put it on my favorite EMAs real quick. 144, 239, um, bam, style. Let's just turn these off. Let's see what that gives us before we go to something a little bit more traditional. Well, where to go? One, two. 144, 239. Okay. Let's see, is it say start? All right, what, let's see, what will it give us? Let's go for the old 21 day EMA. Oh, there we go. Go back to the data. All right, so we're looking for. You know, we probably want a, you know, let's do 8 and 12 and 21. Okay. Boom. Um, we see we're establishing support. That is good. New highs. Um, you can see that we are getting some action on and around the EMAs. You know, uh, some playing around. You could probably dial it in to 
you know, which ones are the most um, sensitive. But you can see here, you know, we, we broke the EMA wick down, closed right above it. Next one, bullish and, you know, uh, I don't know if that's a bullish, and, bullish engulfing, but the body is bigger than the previous red body. We got a couple gaps. We definitely got some price action going on. Um, so there's that. Good news. The other thing I wanted to look at was the the fib extensions, right? So what what I want to identify is what is the um, you know where are the whales or the market makers? I don't even know how it works with bank, but where are they buying? And if we pull this up to here, we see, <laughs> this is great. So common FIB extensions, of course, are the 236, 386, the 0 0.5, 0 0.618, 786, and the 0 0.88 or 0 0.888. Um, and you can see here that we found support at it. In fact, you know, this is a bear trap, right? We went down, bam, slammed down, and then it took off. Came back down, test support. Where does it stop? Right here on the 0.88, and then took off. The next uh, big swing, we go from this low, pivot low, so this over here pretty much broke or came close to breaking this one. So we just pull it back to the next pivot. Um, you can see that matches up with you know where this broke out, essentially. So we pull from this pivot bottom all the way up. What kind of retrace do we see? We see on the way up where it found support Ah, oh, look, there we go. And then we got a front run on it, you know, way back here on the way down. That is no accident that that just tells you folks that are buying um, large amounts are looking for those 88% 88, 88 retraces, right? So what else do we got? What's the next one say? And this is not on log scale. Oh, let me see. So we got the next swing. Goes up. They do not wait for the 0.88. They don't wait for the 80 per, you know, 90% off sale. They pick it up. They start picking it up at the 786. And what this tells you is that on the way down, they're scaling into it, right? And it's not going past the 786 now people are they're they're willing to take it at 78 percent off right they're they're not waiting for that their 90 percent sale right and that's because they've already gotten positions at the 90 percent right so now they're focused on picking up at the 80 <clears> percent <throat> tells you they're they're getting hungry so what's the next one we got a nice swing, comes down to the 0.618, golden pocket, right? Which is like the most common and, you know, one of the probably lowest risk spots to buy things on sale when it comes to crypto. Um, and, you know, you have to remember that the farther down it goes, the tighter the stop loss is. So when it if it gets on sale at 88%, you have, you know, 12% for a stop loss, essentially. Um, so that's much tighter where, you know, when you have a 0.618, you might use um, maybe a pre previous candle body or wick or, you know, the next fib down, or you may go all the way down to the lowest swing. But still, you're expecting the reason why this is so profitable is because 
And this is just a basic like strategy. It's just math, right? So if you just buy uh, when things are 60, you know, 61, 60% off, what you're looking to do is sell, you know, half of your position or three quarters, just depends on how conservative you are and how, um, you know, how much, how you feel about risk, right? Um, but you're, you're selling most of your position or making profit, locking it in here at, uh, at this move, this 6%, right? And you can come up to the 618 or you can come up to the 50%. You know, you can have a take profit one on this 46% swing, take profit two at 56% swing, and then you let it ride and get the one to one, and then you're out, right? Maybe leave 5% of your trade to try if you're looking for a move, you know, up here to the 1618. Um, and then you're looking for a six, you know, a 60 to 80 percent sale when it reaches these targets, you know, um, especially if you get uh, an impulsive wave up to the 1618, um, you start looking for pullbacks to, to buy back in. So, what's the next one? Last retrace here, and I think I took this down. So, now we got to go down to the six hour, right? It's going to tell us what's going on this week, maybe. And what do we see? We see on the six hour that we had a swing up here to whatever it is. And it comes back, tags the 50% to the tick, almost. Like, ideally, you would be scaled in halfway through to the 50, right? So that if it goes halfway through, you get a little bit, get a little bit more. If it tags the 0.5 to the tick, you know, you're in, and then you're looking for confirmation to add to your position. And then you start taking profits at 50, 60, <clears throat> 70, the one to one, one, six, one, eight. Bam. So what this means is uh, buyers are getting hungrier. On the smaller time frames, you're, you're getting 50% off sales or, you know, you can front run it. But this is also a signal of, you know, could be a FOMO signal. If you're seeing this across the market and you're seeing, you know, things like Ethereum coming to the top. So you have to be really careful. But essentially, we're in an uptrend. We have a, on the six hour, a higher high confirmed. We're looking for a, a higher low to be confirmed. So if this continues upward, we'll have that confirmation. Uh, you know, um, a more aggressive trader, right, would be able to maybe confirm that as a low on the third candle instead of waiting for five candles. Ooh, we have some motorcycles outside. Sorry about that. And if we drop to the three hour, you can see that our lower low is in. We are scouting a lower high on the lower time frames. But as long as we put in a higher low, then we can expect continuation testing of these previous highs and hopefully breaking through it, right? So where might the bank be going? So if we assume that is our swing high and that this is the low, we pull the trend-based FIB extension get my pitchfork handy bam 
we'll drop this down to the 90 minutes so we can take the gander. All right, so we can see here that on the 50%, if you would have, at this high, you draw the fib extension, you come down to the 50%, you pull your fib, you mark your, your, your low that you're wanting, and you can, you got an 80% shot, 80% probability that it's gonna tag this red median line right here. And we can see that on this time frame, the 90 minute, uh, it's done so in the matter of, you know, one, maybe two candles here. Um, we are looking for a move to the one-to-one. -one. Where does that put us? So you can see here that if we made a one-to-one -one extension of this move here, that we would actually be right at the previous highs. We can see that we're probably going to find resistance anytime, anywhere this hits this line. So if we break it on down to, oh man, I can't even read it with the, uh, can we do a line chart? Where is the line chart? Line chart. Hmm. Well, never mind. I'll figure that out later. Guess it's not as easy as they make it look in YouTube. Um, but it's oh uh, yeah, I can't even read the the fifteen minute. That's a disaster. How about the forty five? Eh. Hourly. <laughs> That's just one pop in the hourly. That's great. All right, so we're gonna go back to the ninety minute. And bam, probably gonna have a sell off as soon as we hit that. Um, it could, you know, ideally what you want to see is it to consolidate sideways and up in here. And then, you know, the longer it consolidates sideways without hitting it, the higher up it'll be when it hits it. Um, you know, breaking this local top here is going to give us some uh, resistance. You can see that we have lots of resistance here. Yeah. Bam. Yeah. Yeah, see, so you line it up with that, that one candle way back there. It blends in, you know, the same kind of spots that it was tested on the way down. And boom, here you go. Interesting how how these lines were already letting us know there's resistance right here. Um, but if we break that resistance, we are looking at a choppy move to the upside to test new highs, which would be point whatever that is, four zeros and a three. <laughs> um, so there we go. So that's what I think about. Um, I think you, if you can identify tops while we're in this uptrend, then you can identify your 50% to you know 80% sales, and you're looking for pullbacks on the daily time frame. Essentially, you know probably the 12 hour. You know once you get that high confirmed on the 12 hour, um, you know, maybe watch the six hour, then you can put in your fibs for a swing, get you some targets and, you know, slowly over time, accumulate some bank. Um, but what this does mean is that it 
has no problem taking a 90% correction. So whenever you buy, make sure that you know that you're either going to hodl through, you know, or, or you're going to essentially, if you're trading it, you know, have it an amount that you're trading. It will, you know, help with the liquidity, but don't treat your whole bank as a trading account, right? Maybe a, a long-term bag, medium-term bag, a short bag to, you know, trade and get more bank or more ETH is a great idea. This, uh, you know, if you're wanting to trade and accumulate um, cryptos, you're looking for a crypto that swings and is volatile, but still, you know, chartable and within your means to be able to chart and see the patterns. You know, it's uh, the the Dogecoin pumps are very unpredictable. You know, unless you're following them on Twitter, probably. But um, this is my thoughts on the bank. And I'm happy to be a part of it. That's so cool. Y'all have a good day. Mm-hmm.